It's offering a first dose to everyone over 50 by the middle of next month, as well as those under 50 who are clinically vulnerable, and offering a first dose of vaccine to every adult by the end of July. And cautiously but irreversibly, step by step, jab by jab, this country is on the path to reclaiming our freedoms. Thank you very much. And I'm now going to go to Chris, who's going to do the slides. Thank you, Prime Minister. First slide, please. Um, the first slide uh, is uh, we, I've just shown from September of last year because the data from this time last year, as everyone will remember, uh, we just didn't have the testing capacity to be comparable to what we have uh, today. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, rates of numbers of people testing positive for COVID in the UK uh, is continuing to fall. Uh, but this is flattening off to some extent over the last uh, week. Uh, and this is expected uh, at this point of the curve uh, in terms of uh, it's going down, but going down more slowly. Uh, and we have always expected there to be some upward pressure as people went back to school and some unlocking happened. And this is expected as part of the process. Next slide, please. Fortunately, the number of people in hospital with COVID and this shows data right back to April of last year, uh, has come right down uh, and is continuing to fall rapidly through a combination of everyone's efforts on the lockdown, which is driving the significant reduction in cases uh, and the vaccine rollout, which is particularly accelerating this in people who are in the older age groups and those with pre-existing health conditions. Next slide, please. And if we look at the number of deaths registered weekly in the UK, and these are the official deaths uh, registered, again, going back to this time uh, last year, uh, you can see the very rapid uh, spike up that we had uh, this time from this time last year, then really right down to normal, uh, normal rates, uh, very close to normal rates uh, over the summer. Uh, but then the first part of the uh, second wave and then when we got the new variant, the second part of the second wave, which is now fortunately again due to a combination of everyone's work on lockdown, which is bringing the rates right down, and vaccines which is protecting the most vulnerable, uh, these are falling and falling rapidly. And as you can see, they're falling much more rapidly uh, now than the rates uh, of rate of decline of the number of cases. Next slide, please. I think as we are at this point, this sort of anniversary of when lockdown started, I just wanted to show one additional slide to put this in context. Uh, some people sometimes uh, say, well, did this make a, how much of a big difference does this make to overall mortality? What you have is the dotted line here shows the average number of deaths, the five-year average. And you can see very clearly the very substantial spike we had in mortality at the first wave uh, a rather lower one uh, in the first bit of the second wave. And then when the new variant started, uh, a second very substantial spike on top of the background rate of people dying naturally. And, if, and the ONS data that came out today, uh, this morning, uh, said that uh, there had been overall, since the beginning of the epidemic uh, in the UK, uh, 147 uh, 1,179 people, this is uh, to their most, their most recent data, to the end of the 12th of March, uh, who have sadly died from COVID. Uh, more will do so, but we are now on the downward slope. Uh, and then when they looked at the excess deaths, the number of people who died in addition to the number of people who would have died normally, uh, it was uh, 111,641. And I think everybody uh, watching and listening to this will mourn every single one of those deaths. Next slide, please. But the rates uh, of mortality are fortunately now falling uh, rapidly. Uh, and that is due to a combination of the lockdown, as I said, and this is the other thing which the Prime Minister talked about, the steady increase now in the number of people who are vaccinated. And we now have, a, have uh, a situation where the great majority of people over 65 have now had their first vaccine, and some people in the oldest groups are, are now receiving their second vaccine or people who are frontline healthcare workers. So the vaccine program continues to be uh, very important for making sure that as 
new surges happen, which they are likely to at some point, uh, they will meet a wall of vaccinated people, which will help to significantly reduce the ratio of people who catch the disease uh, to the number of people who die from it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Chris. Patrick, anything to, to add? Thank you very much. Let's go to Sheila from Edinburgh. How is the government planning to stop the spread of the third wave from continental Europe into the UK? Are there plans for lateral flow tests for lorry drivers entering the country? And hotel quarantine for everyone else coming to the UK from anywhere abroad? Well, uh, Sheila, thank you very much. Yes, indeed, we uh, must be very wary of the, of the potential for a third wave. Uh, as, as Chris has, has just said, uh, sadly, our, our we're seeing on the on the European continent, we are seeing uh, distinct uh, signs of a of a third wave, and they're they're taking steps to uh, to uh, to abate that, to deal with that. And um, we in the in the UK have very tough measures at our borders already, uh, in, including uh, mandatory tests for anybody who who comes here. You have to get a do a passenger locator form. You get fined uh, two thousand pounds if you fail to. To fill one in, uh, then when you uh, when you get home from wherever you have come from, uh, you have to uh, get a test on uh, day two uh, as well as day eight. And again, you can be very heavily fined if you if you fail to comply and you fail to quarantine at home. As for people coming from the uh, the thirty five red list uh, countries, there are indeed uh, 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 Sheila, there are indeed. Uh, uh, measures to take them directly from uh, their point of arrival in the UK uh, to hotel quarantine where they stay uh, for 10 days uh, as well uh, and again have to have to do uh, two tests but uh, as for your points about about lorry drivers and hotel quarantine for absolutely uh, everybody uh, we keep I want to be I want to be clear with the the public we keep all these measures under review uh, insofar as it's necessary to take extra measures to protect uh, this country against uh, new variants, variants of concern, of course, uh, we're going to do that. Um, I think we'll go on to Tim from Northampton. And Tim from Northampton asks, it's been reported that studies have found vaccine antibodies to last only a few months. Does that mean that vulnerable groups vaccinated first will need to be prioritized for a second vaccination cycle before young people have even had their their first? That is an extremely good question, but I think it's probably a question for uh, clinicians rather than uh, and, and, and scientists rather than for me. So I'm going to go to to, to, to Chris first, or, or who would like to, to go I'm first? Patrick, yeah. go, go ahead. Um, I think if you look at the um, the antibody response to natural infection, which is probably the best data we've got in terms of long term <laughs> effects, you see them really lasting pretty well out to six months. We don't know a long time beyond that. Um, and I think the expectation is that um, antibodies to vaccines will also last um, for a, a reasonable period. We don't know exactly how long, because obviously people haven't been vaccinated for a very long period. So you may see some slight decline, but on the whole, the, vac the antibody levels are holding up. The second thing to say is that the response to a vaccine is only part the antibody response. There are other parts of the immune system T cells and memory cells and other things that are an important part of the overall response. And so I don't think there's any indication yet that vaccine effects are waving. That said, um, there will be a need to think about booster jabs for vaccines in the autumn, I suspect, particularly thinking about getting high level of immunity to cover things over the winter. 